Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. That's right. Marlon Wayans. What's happening? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? New HBO special, God Loves Me. But boy, the Smith family won't. Uh, you know what? <laughs> I really think they're going to, I think they're going to love it. I don't I, think so. I think they're going to love it. And I think Chris Rock's going to love it. Chris is comedian, so he might. Because sometimes yeah. when you crack jokes, it depends on the joke. Sometimes it's good to laugh at yourself. This was like a roast and a toast. Yes. So I didn't just slam them. You know, I, I'm respectful of the journey. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've known each other too long for me to just, like, go in and be yeah. disrespectful. I'm respectful. I, I know them. Like, Jada was one of my dear friends, mm -hmm. you know? And then Will, I know. And I know... Chris since I was 10 mm -hmm. or 11. So I'm I'm not going in. I'm just giving. You it's are funny. going in, Mark. No, no. I, <laughs> you are. Well, what happened? Happened. It, but did you reach out to them beforehand? <laughs> because, no, why would I do that? You just said they were your so friends. So they, 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 they're going to tell me, hey, don't do this joke. Don't do that joke. <laughs> that joke is out of bounds. You could do this one joke. No, you just trust that your intentions are pure and it's good. And look. Here's the thing. The reason why I did this in Atlanta mm -hmm. is because black women mm -hmm. will tell you when you out of bounds. That's right. They'll be like, no, don't do Will like that. They'll be like, uh-uh, see, you went too far with Chris. Black women will be the referee. You know who loves this special? Black, black. women, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's not just a bunch of jokes. It's not even about them. This special is about me. They just so happen to be a part of it. Everybody mm -hmm. in your journey is a part of your journey, but your life ain't their life. God affects you right. differently. That's it's right. like things happen in your life that send you on a journey and go, you know what? I got to be great. Like small stuff, mm -hmm. like the smallest thing you wouldn't even think about. Like when you call me a bruised eggplant. Exactly. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say, Marlon. <laughs> Damn it! That's what, you know what I'm saying? No, no. Like it wasn't the bruise. It Marlin, was the, there wasn't the bruise eggplant. It was oh, when Marlon said, you peaked you, at life. Marlon, hold oh, on. Yeah. I said, you <laughs> peaked at life. I said, it, I said, when you peaked at life, you a local nigga. I was like, I went in. Because I was like, why is he coming at me? I've never heard him hurt this morning. So this morning when the show. wasn't hurt. We, Come on, yes, I was you was. Uh, We played uh, a uh, clip of, uh, of your special where you, you mentioned the facial color <laughs> disparity of Charlamagne's face, right? Yeah, but we, we did that. So I just kind of jabbed that out there. But then he was like, it didn't hurt like the bruised A plant. <laughs> that not, that's not what I said. What that's not what I said. I like, laughed and I said, I'll tell you one thing, man. I never got hurt by a tweet until Marlon <laughs> Wayne told me I look like a bruised A plant. But I see plant. it in his face this morning. He was like, Envy, what is a bruised A plant? <laughs> that it is was not true. That is, that's not what I, That was the point. But all those years ago, that's one of the things that make you think a bruised eggplant. Right. Then you look at an egg, a right. bruised eggplant. I'm going to show. And then it's like the thing that you be tired. And if you don't want to get up and go to work, and you think, nah, this nigga think I'm a bruised eggplant. Nah, I'm I'm getting up. I'm going to work. Give me three. I, one podcast ain't enough. I need five podcasts. A local nigga. Nah, nah. Now I'm writing books. I'm gonna write me a book. I don't know how to spell, but I'm going to write me a book. He writes. I'm telling you, when somebody tells you that you peaked at life. Life, yeah. My God. Jesus. You gotta look around like, hold up. But now look at you, right? No, that's real. Why would I ever be mad that you actually made it in life? life when God sent me in that purpose in that time to make you reevaluate yourself. That's God real. sent you? Yo, That's it's real. real. God That's sends real. you angels sometimes in the form of devil only to reveal themselves <laughs> as devil, angels it's just again. A it's just no, motivation. Because, because look, yeah. you know, same with you. Like, you know, you came, when you was with Wendy Williams and y'all was dissing my family and my mm -hmm. brother was mad. He wanted to fight. And then my sister was pissed mad. off, and then you apologize about it. And I'm just like, but look now, you call me, you're like, yo, wanna do my show? I'm there. That's right. I'm, I'm gonna right. go, I'm gonna be funny, mm -hmm. I'm gonna show up. You know, it's all love, it's all peace, and it's all a part of our journey. It's all a part, there is no bad. Chris Rock heckled me when I was 19 years old. No. I quit stand up comedy. I only did it 10 times up until I love Chris. Chris is like a big brother. I quit stand-up comedy for 20 years. Damn 20 it. years. Because of Chris? Yes. What was he yelling? I was hurt. That was my bruised eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> what What wasn't he yelling? Which way is it you? Damn it, man. Which way? You ain't... You, I thought y'all both be funny. They need to switch families. You need to, you need to go to the, to the DeBarge family. Damn. I was like, damn. 
Damn, so this your get back? This like your Michael B. Jordan on the red carpet moment? No, I don't, see, that's the thing. I'm not, I didn't take it in like that. Wait, 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 wait. See, Michael B. Jordan, and I love Michael B. Mm -hmm. If I had to pull my little brother to the side, I'd be like, don't let him see you sweat. Internalize that feeling. Mm. And let that continue to drive you. And whenever you come out, you come out with love, right? I'm not coming out with any kind of, hey, I processed the pain. I, I took, I processed it, I embraced it, and I allowed it to transform into positive energy. And it's nothing hateful about anything that's ever transpired with Chris, Will, Jade. It's always love mm -hmm. because we can't let people damage us. We have to be grateful for the gift. Michael B just couldn't see the gift in that moment because mm. he was still, he turned into a little boy. He turned into a little boy in school. I seen a little high school kid. That's interesting. Oh, you call real. me corny. <laughs> yeah. And and, and she's saying, I didn't call you corny. Yeah, you did. You called that boy corny because he never forgot that. And I would have just been like, they don't, you don't have to do that, right? Mm -hmm. We, when you, he, you did it by doing it. That says everything. Mm -hmm. And me, I look at my journey and it, it, when you see the special, you're going to be like, oh man, that's a beautiful journey because it's not just about them. It's not about the slap. If I did a special about just the slap, it's meaningless. That's something you talk about and it's gone. Mm -hmm. This ain't about a slap. This is about a 30 year journey of knowing people and how that one cataclysmic moment changed my life. It made me look at my life. It mm -hmm. made me look at my journey. And by the end of it, I got the elixir and I'm like, oh, God does love me. And that elixir is for everybody that's been through something in their life and mm -hmm. in their journey, whether that's me and you with mm -hmm. the bruised egg plant. Mm -hmm. I don't know, somebody said something, you. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you know he got it somewhere. <laughs> it's Angela Yee, wherever she at right now. She's talking about y'all right now. Why, why they kick me out the band? I'm like, what's going on? Every different week, it's a different Angela Yee. I'm like, now there's two of them. You're splitting the atom. <laughs> this is Menudo now. Y'all keep getting rid of Ricky. <laughs> you did take the slap on the journey, though. You took the slap all the way through the United States. <laughs> you, you, you took the slap on the journey, Marlon. <laughs> Touch the little kids in Atlanta tuck, <laughs> selling water or trying to rob your ass. Oh, yeah, but man. you know what? And honestly, I'm getting nothing but good love on this special. What's mm -hmm. crazy is I've been doing this for 30 years. Mm -hmm. If I was any other artist, right, and I did a special like this, I'd be like, yo, y'all, but he's hot. He's not him. But I'm different because I've literally been famous since I was 18. All right, all right, all right. And people have watched me grow and develop literally under the microscope of fame since I was 18. Most mm -hmm. of the times you get to develop as an artist for 20, 30 years before they get to know you. And then you come out with this special and say, yo, who's that? I had 30 years to craft that material. Mm -hmm. I'm different. I Y'all literally watch me mature. I started doing stand-up 10 years ago. I'm on my third special. And I know now, I know my fourth, my fifth, and my sixth. I can honestly say right now, wow. like, Oh, I'm in that zone, and I go. I'm. I think I'm really good right now, but I think in five years, ooh, five years, I'm gonna come with something. How do you, how do you special? How do you make specials special nowadays? Because I think about like you know, like Neil Brennan. He has blocks, and it's like a theme to it. Or like Chris I is doing Neil the live Brennan, stand up. He does some great specials. Mm -hmm. His specials because conceptually, yes, he really thinks about the concept. I thought three mics. Was Fantastic. brilliant. The fact that yeah. he would tell us a, a joke like a one-liner, mm -hmm. then he would tell you the the joke and and, and and it'd be funny, and then he would take you through the pain. That's right. I just take all of them and throw them into one mic, mm -hmm. and and do it that way. And um, but I I really like like what he's doing. I think to make it special, I think you have to. My brothers, this is the first thing I've done. I've always tried to impress my brothers. My mm -hmm. brother Keenan and Damon are the hardest two niggas to impress. Because they've been doing this 50 years of comedy with each of them. This is a fucking century of comedy. That's crazy. These brothers have seen everything. Nothing funny. This is how they laugh. Mm. <laughs> and that's funny. <laughs> if it's funny, then why the fuck ain't you laughing? <laughs> mm, I like that one. They don't laugh. This is the first time that Keenan sent Damon. He goes, we're going to see what Marlon's doing. Damon went to my show and he goes, mm, that's brilliant. Uh-uh. I thought I was hoping you bombed. <laughs> <laughs> Damon's was dark. That, that was genius. And he told Keenan, who the hell was Marlon show? Did he bomb? No. Unfortunately, it was brilliant. Keenan said it was brilliant. 
And Damon said <laughs> it was brilliant because he's seen it all. He said, this is the first time you you did something I never seen. Wow. You made me look at the art form a different way. He said it was like, it was, it was like a one man sh play, but a stand up special at the same time. And he referenced like my physicality. He referenced staying in the pocket. He referenced even having a little bit of heart. Like he was like, it was well crafted, well put together and the truth. And then mm -hmm. the truth of the journey and it was all real. He was like, it was brilliant. Keenan was like, he agreed because they seen it all, mm. and this is the first time they've seen something different. I think that's what, to, to me, what makes a, 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 a comedian really great is when they do something different. Richard Pryor did something different. Mm -hmm. That was the first guy to tell you a joke, then animate the joke. Everything he ever animated had a different voice, a different character. He'd do a monologue, separate you from the audience and just do a monologue like y'all don't even exist. You get an applause break, he comes out of the character. Then he tells you about painful stuff like a heart attack. Mm. And he makes you laugh with, the dude was dying and mm -hmm. he makes you laugh with having a heart attack. And then he talked about his truth and then he had a vulnerability about him. And you put all that together and the Richard Pryor Live is to me the greatest stand-up performance I've ever seen. That's mm -hmm. GOAT. When Damon did the handicapped bully and he, what are you looking at? And he thought it wasn't like that. <laughs> Yo, that changed the game because why? Damon took his pain. Damon was handicapped as a kid. He had a, a club foot. And he talked about what, you know, I used to be a bully. Like, what kind of bully? I'm a handicapped kid. Picture me being a bully. And he would do, what are you looking at? All right, don't make me get up. That's but, true. See, I've heard him tell that story. I, didn't, I thought that was just a joke about the club. No, I, take his shoe off. His <laughs> shoe looked like a a, 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 a a Big Bertha Callaway club. <laughs> he got a, it's flat and goes like this. It's weird. He got a he got to fuck with socks on. Um, <laughs> but Damon, when he talked about his pain and he twisted himself up and then he did handyman. Hey, he did stuff that I never seen. I never seen somebody on stage morph in front of my eyes mm -hmm. and become a completely different character. And I grew up in the house with this dude doing this. So I think that's what brilliant stand up comedians do. Now, speaking of which, how come they ain't the, one the wall ain't on finished. the wall? It that ain't one, finished. You ain't got one no, way. It ain't it's finished. 13,000 no, niggas no. in my family. You still mad about the bruise no, eggplant? He he is, because is. of the bruise no. eggs, you should put me on there. We got you in this wall. No, no, we're doing, we're doing you on this wall. Matter of fact, the guy is here now that did this because he's coming to look at this one today. And you are on this wall. Okay. I was going to ask, when you do comedy, do you, when you do these specials, because it sounds like you want to show your brothers that you can do it and that you are funny. Do you do it for your brothers or do you do it for the crowd? I do it for myself. Mm. I, that's the thing, right? If you look at the progression, my brothers was like, I remember we was in, I, we took Keenan to Greece for his 60th. And we're inside the, um, the, the, the sprinter van and we're talking about comedy. And I told my brothers my plan. I said, I want to do, I'm going to drop my first special. I know I'm only seven, eight years in, but I want to drop my first special. And then every two years, I want to drop a different special because I want to see my progression as an artist. Mm -hmm. These niggas lit into me so bad. Hey, why didn't they believe Sean, you could do it? that's stupid. Why would you do that? You got to wait 20 years before you could drop a special. That's stupid. You want to drop your best one first. Damon, that's the dumbest shit I ever heard. How you going to drop a special in eight years, nigga? You, you barely got three jokes. How you going to do that, <laughs> Keenan? Mm, that's not what real comedy is. And I was sitting there. I remember I was mad. And I was in the limo. I said, fuck that. I'm doing what I said I'm going to do. I'm not trying to be y'all. I'm just trying to be me. And this is the mm. fight we have mm -hmm. because my brothers love me. I don't take it like, fuck y'all, I got something to prove. Mm -hmm. No, I go, instead of, I'm going to show you, I don't do it with that bitterness. I go, okay, I'm going to show myself and then I'm going to show y'all that we can do this mm -hmm. this way. I'm going to show you with love. I'm going to show you humbly. Mm -hmm. Okay, well then do it. Sean, it's stupid, it's never going to work. And they walked out the sprinter. And then Damon looked back and he seen me and my feelings. And he said, you know what, ugly? It sounds like a stupid plan. But go ahead, do you. Show us something different. We old niggas. You that digital nigga. We don't even know what a Twitter is. <laughs> I said, all right. And he rubbed me and he said, 
it's still going to be on funny. And then he left the band. <laughs> but that sent me on a, a mission, like personally, and I'm doing exactly what I said I was going to do because in my lifetime, I got all these brothers that trailblaze for me, but I'm not shit if I don't walk off the beaten path and try to trailblaze you something did that for them. Already. I can't, no, I, I, I but can't. I gotta do something for them because I gotta do something for their kids that's following me. I'm the uncle, the last uncle that they're following. Like, yo, uncle did it this way. And that's what's making me, me, not Damon and Keenan and Sean, little brother, that I'm Marlon. Did they I don't understand think nobody looks at you like that, Marlon. I was gonna say, did they understand like the white chicks and the things that you do that's different from no, no, their era? No, no, white chicks, me, Sean, Sean was, Sean's a brilliant, Sean came up with the idea for white chicks. He called me up, I thought this nigga was high on green tea, and he was like, we should play white women. I said, nigga, go to sleep. Y'all was ahead of y'all time. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Y'all was identifying was. as women. Sean, he <laughs> said back in the day. Y'all was ahead of y'all time. Now the white women turn into black women. Right. So he came with the idea, and then we pitched it to Keenan, and Keenan was like, mm, that could work. And then we watched some movies and we found the some like it hot and we was like boom. And then we looked at the Paris and Hilton. We was like boom. And we put the map together and we did that. But see, we did that collectively. I started on my own journey about ten years ago, mm -hmm. where I started doing my stand up by myself, where I started doing my movies by myself, where I started doing my TV show by myself. There's been the past eight like eight years I've been on my own. Haunted House. You know, I did that movie. I did all those movies. Forty, fifty million dollar budgets, thirty five million dollar budgets. When I did Haunted House, I went all the way back to ground one a million dollars to make a movie wow. we had one location in a house we wrote the script me and my producing partner rick alvarez and we did a movie for a million dollars that grossed 70 million dollars worldwide and then we was off to the races and it, but every little movie we kept getting more money like two million then we went to three million then we went to a five million dollar budget then we did naked and that was a, eight, a 15 million dollar budget and then we did uh uh what's the one after naked uh, sex tuplets that was a 38 million dollar budget and the last one we did uh curse of bridge hollow was a 50 a 48 million dollar budget so wow. i'm slowly but surely progressing and it's the same thing with the art and i'm doing exactly what i said i said every two two and a half years, I'm gonna drop a special. So I did Wokish, and if I watch, watch Wokish, and then watch the performance in this one. Wokish, I was nervous, I was all over the place, I was I was young, I was sweating, I was doing too much. Then in the other one, um, uh, you know what it is, I did it during the pandemic, I, I learned each time, mm -hmm. I can't, they got masks on, you can't really hear the laughs, I'm in an outdoor arena, and I'm not gonna sweeten the laughs, cause I'm like, nah, I'm not that dude, let let, it, let the audience at home laugh, I know you can't hear these, <laughs> that's gonna sound dim, so the audience at home was like, nah, they wasn't laughing, cause laughter's contagious, so on this one, I was like, I'm gonna go to center stage, I'm gonna make sure that I'm there with this loud ass crowd and I'm gonna give this dope ass performance, but I gotta sit in the pocket like a dope, like a quarterback. I'm not gonna go running around. I'm Tom Brady until the defense breaks down and then I'm Patrick Mahomes. Wow. And I'm, I'm seriously calming myself down. I don't hype myself up. Mm -hmm. I went on stage real calm. I stayed calm. I was a storyteller. And then when it was time to turn it on, whoom! No, the energy level that I, I did, and it, I went crazy. I was all over the stage, and I come back, whoa, center, tell the story, reset, reset with the jab like a boxer. And to me, I'm glad I did these three specials, and I got, I know my next one, I'm gonna film that in July. I'm gonna do that one at the Apollo about my mom, and then I know the next one you I'm gonna do. This year? Yeah. Damn. I'm not fucking around because I don't want to sit on material. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a writer. I write movies. I write mm -hmm. TV. I don't. I don't need that long to rehearse a script. Mm -hmm. I know how to. Re I wrote this. The uh, the uh, God loves me. I wrote it literally on a stage during performances that people paid to see. Wow. I came up with the idea on wow. stage. I talked about it. It happened at the Oscars, and I just started talking about it at the Oxnard Improv, Levy Live, and by the end of the weekend, I had 15 minutes. So I kept adding it because i was initially doing a set about my mom and de dealing with grief and then i just kept going and then i had this hour and a half monster but it was about my mother and the slap and how it was god love me and i was like no it's bifurcated it's two different things let me separate the atom <laughs> then i just looked at that and i was like oh snap and i just saw the journey mm -hmm. and then i was like boom boom here's how you bookend it here's a little message i and i felt good and i filmed this crazy Normally you tour for like two, three years to get the set. 
mm -mm. I toured for three, four months. I filmed in August. I The slap happened March 27th. By August 7th, I was filming my special in Atlanta. That don't happen, four Man. months. And I wrote it in my head. I don't have writers. I'm mm -hmm. I'm my writer. I, I, don't, I don't like that. No, no, I need my experience. I need my truth. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want to get that big where I'm like, huh. Tell me what's funny about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Here's my life. I'm rich. <laughs> what's funny about flying private? You know, I don't want to be that. I always want to do the work. And so when I filmed it in August, it took two months to cut it together. And then we sold it in December. That's why it's coming out in March. Otherwise, I would have had this out by August. Question. When y'all go to Greece, when y'all take Keenan to Greece, who pays? Um, you know, funny enough. I wind up getting stuck with a lot of the fucking bills. <laughs> I don't know why, because there's a, there's a respect thing, right? My brothers took me, I wouldn't be me if it wasn't for my brothers. My mm -hmm. brothers, they didn't, they always came back home. They knew <clears throat> me and Sean was there and, and they made it a purpose to go get their little brothers. Keenan would fly us out to LA. Keenan would put movies on while he went to a club, come back and he'll put like blazing saddles on or he'd get the videotape mm -hmm. of Airplane. He goes, mm, what's funny about that? And how do you make it funnier? And he'd go to the club. And I remember it was the 80s. So then they could put his jeans on with no drawers. Uh, he was getting pussy in the club, <laughs> apparently. And <laughs> that's the 80s, right? <laughs> and he would come back and he'd have a girl and the girl would go in the room and his water bed. And he'd go, all right, before I leave, Tell me what you guys thought of the movie and how do you make it funnier? And we would sit there and pitch. We didn't know what he was doing, but he was grooming us at 11 and 12 years old. And my nephew, who was like seven, and my other nephew, who was five, he was grooming us to do this. My brothers looked out. And for me, now that they're older, I'm going to look out for them right, the way right, they right. looked out for me. And I'm going to look out for their kids. When you see a Marlin set, I guarantee you, there is a young Wayans, Keenan's son, Sean's son, Damon's daughter. There is some Wayanses on the set. Fuck all this bullshit, nepotism. This, yeah, nigga, we do nepotism. Why wouldn't y'all? Sucker, <laughs> suck, sucker, brothers, dick, nigga. No, we do nepotism. It's a good thing. You're supposed yeah, right. to. If you don't That's give right. back to your family, right. you can't be generous. That's right. What fools gonna give out if you don't give back to your family? You have to give your family. A man takes care of his family first, and then your generosity bills mm -hmm. so I, i'm with the nepotism thing. i still feel like the wayne's legacy hasn't been uh documented correctly right no. right yeah. you know what i mean like I, I don't know if it's a documentary or a movie but something has to be done to show what this family has accomplished it's coming right these are i get excited because the first 30 years was learning right now the next 30 is the execution of all that we we have a well we are alaska mm -hmm. We are a now Texas where they drilled oil. We mm -hmm. haven't even drilled in our big ass uh, plot of land. Mm -hmm. And now when we start drilling, and then the, all of my other nephews, I got nephews and nieces, and my daughter and my son is these niggas is in film school. They ain't fucking around. They handsome and motherfucking writing, and they got storyboards. And I'm just like, yo. And now we have all this knowledge. It's coming. These next thirty is coming. It ain't. It ain't. Um, it ain't over. It's just beginning. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Now you, I haven't even had a hot moment yet. You realize this shit? What you mean? What you mean? I have never had a hot moment. Oh no, that's true. You've been consistent. I get what you said. You've been consistent, consistent, consistent. But it hasn't been that moment where Marlon is yes. the, the the guy guy. Yes. And that's just, it. Sounds weird to Isn't say. That crazy? It does yeah, sound yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Though. So many things. But I've I never get, had I, a hot I get exactly moment. Exactly what you're saying. I've never been the guy that gets the first script. I've never been the guy that go. Here's this action movie. Here's this drama. Yeah, Here, yeah, I yeah, never yeah, been yeah. the guy that gets the top ten scripts with the top ten producers with the top ten directors. I've never been that guy because I've always been the guy creating his own material, Do it yourself. staying in the game, doing this, doing that. But one day when I become the guy, because now I'm a, I, I got 30 years of everything under my belt. Mm -hmm. Now I can drama, mm -hmm. kill it, show me. Nigga, I, I lost my air, right? I, I'm an air. Yeah. Um, I, it's that's a dope role. Talk it's about, it's yeah, a small role, air. but it's dope. It's um a, a movie about um Ben Affleck directed it and uh uh, uh what's his name uh, Matt Damon, Matt Damon mm -hmm. and him star Viola Davis. Mm -hmm. So good, Viola Davis. She's amazing. She's always good, but she's even better in this one because I seen something she's never done. 
She just was so grounded and so centered and so powerful. She didn't even, it was a strength, yet a softness to her. She's always a lioness, you know, when it comes to those tears and nobody's gonna dig those, but the way she just stood in power, mm -hmm. her presence, amazing. Who do, you play in here? Who do you play in here? I play George Raveling. I, I have a small role, but it's impactful. It's a great scene. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the scene, uh, uh, a scene I would say, it's like um, one of them Christopher Walken scenes in uh, Pulp Fiction mm -hmm. or uh, Christopher Walken in True Romance, mm -hmm. you know, him and Dennis Hopper. You know, it's like one of those impactful scenes that I have with Mac Damon. It's, it's a great movie. Ben called me up. Man, that Ben Affleck. And um, <laughs> he was like, ben Affleck. And he gave me this long speech. First of all, I was like, how you get my number? Then I remember, oh, this nigga played Batman. So he has, yeah, yeah. He has access. And then, so we're talking and he's, he's just rambling on. He's like, hey, I got this role and I was wondering if you would do it. And you know, I was like, you know, I was talking to Jennifer and Jennifer was like, I need, a, he was like, I need a handsome guy, funny. I need to make sure he's funny, but he's a really good actor. And I seen some of your stuff and she's known you from a living color. 45 minutes, this man's talking to me about doing this part. I said, Ben, you had me at, hello, this is Ben Affleck. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck what you were gonna put me. You could've been a porno, I'd be bet, bet. Cream pie, let's go. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> did, he, did he ask you any old questions about J-Lo? <laughs> Huh? Did he ask any any old questions about? No, J -Lo? no. Like, did you hit? No. He was, <laughs> <laughs> which one of your brothers? Which, which one, one of your brothers? He wasn't all insecure <laughs> like that. No. Been a been a cool dude, man. And it, the whole time he's sitting there, he got a camera. I mean, he's directing, but he's holding the camera. And he's yoked, dude. Is yoked. Mm -hmm. He's holding this camera, and you know, and I was doing long takes because you know he's letting me improvise. So I was doing these long ass takes, <laughs> and you just see him just sweat start coming out the side Hilarious. of his head and he starts getting sore and in the middle of the take he's, he's here whoa and he puts the fucking camera down and he's like here you you come pick this up and do it but he just let me run we mm -hmm. had a great time and the movie is really great and i'm i'm excited to be in it and i i've been blessed man to work with you know this man directed argo and mm -hmm. oscar mm -hmm. award winning movies i've worked with the cohen brothers i've worked with sofia coppola i've worked mm -hmm. with darren aronofsky I have all this collection of work over 30 years, and it's all these fragmented pieces. And one day, I'm starting to watch them coagulate. And I got great shit coming. What do you hope to learn from doing The Daily Show? Um, I just wanna go exercise the gifts I got. All right, all right, I, I mean, I think it takes a certain talent mm -hmm. to really do The Daily Show and bring its own personality. I'm not trying to change The Daily Show. Mm -hmm. The Daily Show, is the Daily Show. I ain't going in there like, nah, we gonna make the Daily Show in living color. No, 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 it's not, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna bring me mm -hmm. to the Daily Show. I'm a, I know how to tell jokes. I know how to do stand up. I know how to sit my ass down. I know how to correspond. I, it's, it's about, the Daily Show to me is about being appropriate. You can be you, but be you within the structure that they have. Be your best you. And know that you're playing to the audience at home. Be engaged with the people that's doing sketches. It's their show. Wait, wait, wait. So ingratiate yourself to the other artists. How can you make them funnier? Mm -hmm. Because it's, uh, and then do some of the things they do. We did Man on the Street. I got to do a few sketches myself. And you know, so far we having a great time. And I, most of all, you're walking into somebody's house. You go in there, mm -hmm. you make everybody feel welcome in their home and you be grateful and you wash the dishes and you make sure that you dry them and you put them away and mm -hmm. you thank them for dinner and that you, you're you a, a, a humble, gracious guest. And, and that's something you would do You would do full time if they asked you? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could sit at a desk this long. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know how y'all do this. <laughs> I, like sometimes I watch you, you look like, man, I want to sleep right now. <laughs> sometimes I just have extra energy. I'm like, let me make Envy laugh because he about, that coffee ain't working. <laughs> no, y'all went to De La last night? No, 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 no I just flew from Atlanta. No. I just flew from Atlanta. Oh, I was okay. shooting some Atlanta. I wanted to go to De La. That was um, overheard though. I wanted, I, um, what do you think when, when hosting? What do you, um, what, you got any pointers? I would say just be yourself, but you said something just now that made me think, you know, you're within another structure and you said you have to be appropriate. Like, oh, I'm going to be me. I'm appropriate. Saying, like, Leslie was her. Leslie right. was definitely she her. She was her. She was screaming at her. Yep, 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 she yep. was like, fuck y'all. I'm pussy, 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 pussy. Yeah, yeah. And people seem to like that. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, I, I, I would say do you. Right. Yes, that's really it. You really got to go in there and do you in a, in a structure, I guess. Right.
Yeah. Okay. I want to ask with all the reboots we're seeing, right? Bel Air and all these other reboots. Could we have a reboot in Live in Color? Absolutely. Would well, you? I don't think anybody else could reboot it. I think we could, we could actually reboot. And this is the funny thing about us is we have all these franchises over there. We just go, we'll do it. And I think, and we've been talking and you know, it's about having the right time to do it. Now, all of us are seasoned, right? So one guy could do the In Living Color. The other guy could work on the scary movie. The other guy could work on the the white chicks too. Like now is the time where, yeah, we and we've been talking about it. So y'all got characters y'all could turn right, Absolutely. Right? <laughs> we got a well of stuff. And then we got new stuff. It's like when 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 uh they took scary movie and they went on their way, well, it was like, go ahead, fuck him. Take it. Why? Cause right after that. I did Haunted House. Mm -hmm. And Haunted House and Scary Movie with Five went head to head. They paid $40 million to do that movie. And it, you know, didn't do as well as my movie did for a million dollars. Wow. And because the audience over times and it just realizes, wait, the guys that created this ain't there. They taste the chicken and go, wait, this ain't the Colonel's recipe. Mm -hmm. We have a, the Colonel's recipe. You can only get away. You could do, when we left in Living Color, you could do an extra season. You could bring Chris Rock and Bismarck e and all those people on. You could keep some, but when the Wayans leave, we take the recipes. Mm. So you gotta, you gotta keep, you know, and, and we've learned that over time, you just gotta get smarter and better with your business. When they all did right. that, when they took a Living Color and they had people that weren't the Wayans. How did you look at those people that were taking that position? We never hated. I mean, we never hated. We felt sorry for them. You ever watch an episode of that? Yeah, that shit was hard. <laughs> one, I think one nah, was hard. God That's... rest Bismarck's soul, but Keenan would have never put that nigga on Living Cup. <laughs> he would have took Sean's place as the DJ, but a cast member? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Chris, it's just people got to know how to make you funny. Mm -hmm. Keenan was great. Keenan's a brilliant dude, and he's infected us with that, of being able to go, Oh no, that person is a special talent. Like me, I know special talent. Mm -hmm. Brisha Webb is a special talent. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Essence Atkins is a special talent. Atheon Crockett is a special Absolutely. talent. Mm -hmm. Tony Baker is Absolutely. a special talent. Mm -hmm. DC Irvin, special talent. I, I see these people and I'm going, yo, special right. talents. The same way Keenan saw Damon. Tisha Campbell's brilliant. We've known Tisha Campbell since in living color i think tisha was the first fly girl on the um on the uh pilot wow really? that's how long i've known tisha campbell like and we've always known how brilliant she was like mm. this ain't no accident but along the way keenan would, would sit with jada and be like and give he, she'd be at living color he'd be there giving her advice like like i grew up in hollywood around this that's why i feel so secure doing god loves me because everybody knows that I'm the little brother and I only come with love. So gotcha. I'm not coming to beat you down. I'm coming to build you up. But I do see what's funny. All right, wait, wait. And I'm going to talk about it. Kim Whitley said she want to give you something, man. She said she's been Kim Whitley. She's been trying she to give, she she trying she to give my, you something forever. She seen me change one time and she said, that looked like a little Louis, Louisville slugger bat. <laughs> So every time she sees me, she put a big ass titties on me. And I'm gonna stop it. You don't, she don't fuck around and catch me on a, on a bad day. And catch this dick. I she don't fuck she around. She don't catch me on a horny ass day. I'm feeling lonely. She gonna catch this dick. She gonna catch that, and be I real mad about herself. For. Calling me all type of nights and shit. No, you fuck around. Stop playing with me, Kim. Oh man, God <laughs> loves me. That's right. We appreciate you for joining. Yes, thank before, you. Before you leave, I got. I I'm gonna one second. I'm gonna be at the this week in I'm, uh, March 10th. I'm gonna be at the the uh, Foxwoods Casino on March 10th. And then on March 11th, I'm going to be at the Chevalier Theater in Boston, Medford, Boston, Massachusetts. And Foxwoods in Connecticut. Fe Foxwoods in Connecticut. I just need you to write a couple of uh, jokes, you know, down for me. Like, that that bruised eggplant, <laughs> I've never seen him hurt like that. You don't understand. It wasn't the bruised eggplant. It was the peak that life. No. Because you got to understand, at the time, I was living back Mom, home with my mom. I've never I heard got this man act like this before <laughs> in my life. We were talking about life. nothing. I was minding my business. He started Yo, with me. He said I didn't even start. I did. Charlie, I did. did you no, start? I did. I started that. He just that. picked on I me. I, that. He said, this nigga ain't even funny. I said, you, I ain't funny. No, it you wasn't that. No, he said, you funny in movies and TV, but he should get the fuck off Twitter. I said, oh. It was something. What was it? It was Transformers. Was it something a G.I. No, Joe? No, it was on Twitter. You I said know, I wasn't I, Twitter funny. 
I don't remember. You said I wasn't. I remember that. Not as much as the booze eggplant, but it hurt. <laughs> Bro. I was like, nah, I'm Twitter funny too. This and then he, we went in. This morning he sat back. He was like, yeah. <laughs> He's like, Marlon called me a bruised eggplant. Because I was reminiscing about said, that what? moment. Said, you got to think. I said, what he goes? I'm yeah. Sitting, I'm what, sitting is a, home. what is a bruised eggplant? No, no, no. I'm, I'm sitting at home. I can see it hurt. I'm sitting at home in my mama's house. I've been fired with a poor time. So the bruised eggplant was one thing. you like, God damn, a bruised eggplant? But then he said, you that beat life. that life, nigga. <laughs> oh, and shit. Like, no, <laughs> shit. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, no. You know what's I think crazy? I went to pray or something. Like, God, listen, man. See, but he, <laughs> Let me to get past this point in my life. <laughs> but see, you was a troll. You was a troll. No, I was. You I know was, who I was, was a troll? Who? Joe Budden. Mm -hmm. Joe oh, fucking yeah. Joey B was a fucking troll. I'm minding my business. He said some smart shit. Recently? I went in. Or back then? Ba back then. Okay, okay, okay. I went in. I was like, you one hit wonder. Nigga, you one pair of ass, nigga. <laughs> I look at my tweets. I, and, you know, and <laughs> I told him, you peaked that life. Kill yourself. I, Dang. I said, you the best thing life. about you is your beard, nigga. I, <laughs> I, Jesus. I was so mad. And you know, I gotta call him because I, oh, I, I, I think it's still lingering. Like, we got over. Our, I gotta go do Joey's show because we went at it. We gotta talk Jesus. about it. Because I was minding my business and then you're gonna come shoot his shots fired. Let me tell you something. You peaked that life is so cruel. It's I would a, never say that to somebody. You peaked that life. You peaked that life. I gotta God fight you damn. after that, man. Well, you I'm, I'm glad life. you didn't peak that life and I'm Thank proud you, of you. Thank you, my brother. brother. I'm glad I, I didn't. Every time you do something new, I'm always gonna support it because I feel like. Like, you know what? God loves you, and I'm a part of that journey. That's you right. You are. I appreciate right. well, you, Well, it's DJ MV. It's the bruised eggplant. <laughs> and by the way, thank you for joining us, brother. Love. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.